This lab is somewhat out of context if you are following the Cisco Packet Tracer tutorials to develop your knowledge and understanding for Cisco assessments. However, this tutorial will provide a great overview of how websites are served to your computer from the internet. Websites are one of the most common services found on the internet, so let's build a mock-up of how internet pages are served to your computer. First, let's get all the hardware needed to build this scenario. Select and move to the network three servers, one PC and two switches. Connect all the devices together, and once you have fully connected the network, rename the servers to their corresponding role, DHCP, DNS and website. I have outlined or separated, as you can see, two areas in this simulation, the local or internal local network, one which you might have at home or work, and the internet in general. This of course is not how the internet is connected, but just serves our scenario so that you can understand the principles or basic services of our networks to browse websites on the internet. In order for a web server to provide or serve you a web page, in principle we need a DNS server and a web server. Inside of our network we normally have DHCP servers running. We could just use one server to do all these, these tasks, but I've broken it down to help you understand what is happening. Let's first begin by setting up the DHCP server in our local network. Let's assume that this represents our private network which we connect to the internet. I assume that you are following the packet tracer series and have already experienced creating a DHCP server. If not, just follow the steps I take. First configure the server with a static IP address 192.168.11. Create a DHCP range. I choose a simple class C and remember that the first IP address is 192.168.1.2, not 1 because the server is using the number 1. Press save and the DHCP configuration is completed. Open the PC, navigate to the interface and select DHCP. The PC should now be assigned to an IP address from the DHCP server. That is our local network configured for now. So now to set up the web server. First we need to configure the web server with a static IP address. Please remember that this is just a simple demonstration or principles of how the internet and web servers serve your website. I am going to use an IP address in the same range of the DHCP server in order to get this demonstration working. We are assuming this server is somewhere connected on the internet. So go ahead and assign an IP address of 192.168.1.254 to the web server. I renamed the web server to include the IP address to help remember it for later use. Now to configure the website. Within the web server, select, D, uh, sorry, select HTTP from the list in the config tab. Delete the text and just type hello world or something more interesting. This is the web page that will be displayed in our internet browser on the PC. Now we have the web server working. We can test it by opening the PC and select desktop tab and the web browser. Remember the IP address of the web server. We can now type the IP address in the browser to open the website we have just created, which is stored on the web server. There you go. If everything is configured correctly, the web server has just served the new website you have created on the web server previously. That is all good and well, but we don't use IP addresses to browse websites. This is a good time now to introduce DNS. What you've just done is still possible on the internet. If you open your browser, you could type in the IP address of any website and access it. If I type, uh, for example, the IP address of Google search engine or the Google website, you can see that it opens the web page as normal. This, however, is not exactly convenient, remembering the IP address of every website. DNS provides a service on the internet to translate the domain name you type into the browser to the IP address of the website or where the server is located. So in brief, you type in, for example, google.com, the request travels to the DNS server. Typically, your internet server provider may provide DNS services. When the DNS 
server receives your request, it looks up the domain in its database to find the corresponding website IP address. That information is now delivered to your computer and then used to find the Google server on the internet, which then serves the website to your browser as you would expect. To configure DNS, we first configure the server with a static IP address, 192.168.1253. I rename the server to include the IP information to help me remember the IP address later. Select the DNS option from the config tab list and create a new resource record. I am going to simulate google.com, so therefore type in http colon forward slash forward slash google.com in the resource record name and type the IP address of the web server, in this case 192.168.1254 in the address field, and press add. Before we can test the DNS server, we need to tell the PC that the DNS server exists and where to find it. This is exactly how your computer works. Normally your internet service provider provides you this information automatically through DHCP. So, so go back to the DHCP server and open the config tab and select DHCP. In addition to providing IP addresses, the DHCP server can also provide other information, including DNS server IP addresses. Now update DHCP server by typing the DNS server IP address into the DNS server field, 192.168.1253, and press save. Now power cycle the PC, open the PC up and turn it off and on again. If you hover the mouse over the PC, you can see the IP information to check that the settings have been configured correctly. That now leaves only to test that everything is working. Go to the PC desktop and select browser. Type the domain name, in this case google.com, and there you have it. This is happening millions of times per second all over the world.